Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Avernos. In today's video, I will be showing you how you can use Beautiful Soup and Request to scrape data from a web page. The first thing we need to do is launch our Jupyter Notebook. You can use any development environment for this. I'll just be using Jupyter Notebook because that's what I have installed and it's what I'm the, the most familiar with. So we'll change into whichever folder we want to store our code in and then we can just go ahead and launch our Jupyter Notebook and once that launches, I'll see you in the notebook. The next thing we need to do is import the libraries we'll need for this analysis. So we'll import requests. We will import beautiful soup. So from BS4, import beautiful soup. Make sure you capitalize the B and the S. And then we'll also import CSV. We'll export our file as a CSV when we're done. The next thing we need to do is specify the URL for the web page that we're going to scrape. And we'll also need a name of our CSV file that we're going to export at the end. We'll call this revernosdata.csv. And then the web page that we're going to scrape will be the Revernos homepage. And what we'll do with this data is for each text that we have on the web page, we're going to display that in the CSV file. The setup for this is very simple and that's all we need to do. So now we can go ahead and create our scraping function. I'll just call this function scrape Revernos. If you haven't, you should subscribe to the channel to get more content like this. We'll pass in the URL that we want to scrape and the name of our output file. And we're going to wrap this in the try accept block in order to handle errors. Everything in our try block will execute and if there is an error, then we can handle that in our accept block. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to send a get request to the URL and try to get the data we need. So set response equal to request, which is the library we imported earlier, and we'll use the get function. We'll get the URL that's passed into this function, and then we'll just say timeout after 10 seconds. If there is an error, we're going to raise that error and then we'll move on to our accept block if this were to actually happen. So we'll do response that raise for underscore status. Make sure you spell everything correctly there. And now we need to parse our HTML content with beautiful soup. So we're using requests to make our HTTP request and we're going to use beautiful soup to actually parse the HTML that we get back. So we'll set soup equal to beautiful soup which is another one of the libraries we ordered. Make sure you capitalize the B and the S again. And we're going to parse the response text that we receive. And we're going to use Beautiful Soup's HTML parser. Once we have that, we need to iterate through this massive chunk of text that we'll have. Actually, our website isn't that large, so it won't be that massive. But you can imagine doing this on a much more in-depth website and getting back a ton of data. So we're going to need some way to parse through that data. So first we'll create an empty list and then we're going to be appending data into this list as we get it, as we parse it out. We are going to create a for loop and we're going to loop through all of the tags that we want to pull data from. In this case, we want to pull data from the paragraph tag. These are HTML tags, so P is paragraph, and we also want to pull any headers. There are six different header sizes that you can have in HTML, H1 through H6. So we're going to go ahead and pull all of those here. So we'll pull the P tag, which is paragraphs, and then H1 through H6. Once we have that, we're going to use beautiful soup to find each of our tags. So we'll have, we'll call this elements. We'll use our beautiful soup object and we'll use the find all function. And we're going to find all for each of these tags. And then we're going to get all of our tags and that will go into elements. So we need to loop through elements now. So for element and elements, we're going to pull the text from that element. So element get text strip equals true. This strip parameter here just removes extra white space that we don't need, so that's why we're including it here. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to use if text. That means if our text is not empty, we are going to append. And what we'll append is a dictionary. So we'll call the first key tag, and that will be the tag that we're looping through right now. And then the next key will be text, and that will be the text that we were able to find. Then make sure you close out your curly bracket and your parentheses. Tag and text will be the names of our columns and our data frame later on. So that's why we're using that. 
The next thing we need to do is export our data as a CSV file. So while you're still inside of this try block, we're going to open a new CSV file. So we'll do with open output underscore file. This will be the name of our file that we passed in and defined earlier. We'll open it in W mode, which is write mode. Separating the new lines, we don't need anything here, so you can pass in an empty quote. And then for encoding, we're going to use UTF-8, which is a standard and probably the most common encoding. So once we we'll have that, we can do as CSV file. For field names, we're going to pass in our column names, so that will be tag and text. And then we need our writer, which we will be using the csv.dict writer, which is dictionary writer. And that's why we appended dictionaries to our data so that we'll be able to use that later on. So we'll have our CSV file here and our field names will be field names. We'll use our writer, we'll write the header. And then we'll write rows and we'll pass in our data here. This is our dictionary that contains our data, which is why we use this dictionary writer. And now we're passing in our data and writing that or appending that to the rows. Now we can go outside of our width, make sure you're still within your try. And then we can print, let's do a formatted string here. And we can say data successfully saved to output file. Make sure the name of your variable is within these curly brackets and you have this F so you know it's a formatted string here. Then close quote, close parenthesis. That looks good. The last thing we need to do here is handle errors. So now that we have our try, we have our accepts. So if request has an error, we're going to handle that specifically. And so if, if there is a request error or a request exception, we're just going to use the alias E to refer to it, and we'll just print what that error is. So we'll say error fetching the URL, and then we'll pass in E here. And let's say that there's some other type of ex exception that we want to handle. We'll just say an error occurred. And then we'll pass in whatever that error is. So this is one of those cases where if there's a specific exception that you might expect, you can handle that and then you can also have a catch-all except where something else went wrong you can handle that also i just caught two things so before we run our code we need to fix two issues first in this first except instead of saying exception make sure you have an s that should be exceptions and then also make sure this is utf8 not uft8 and then once we do that make sure you rerun to create that scrape for vernos function again and then we can just go ahead and copy this and make this our function call. And then we can go ahead and run this and see what output we get. And it says data successfully saved to revernosdata.csv. If you were to open up that file, you'll be able to see the tag that we have and then the text that is associated with it. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. I have a lot of great Python programming content on this video, so make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss any uploads. And also, if you're more interested in web scraping, I do have a video where you can watch and learn how to web scrape photos from Instagram, so you don't want to miss that. So go ahead and check that out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.